Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part 28 of my Hyperion progression series. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from usual because there's a few things that I wanted to talk to you guys about regarding this character and this account. And just to start off, let's have a quick recap of the bosses that I've done over the last week or so. Pretty much no drops, nothing really new has happened over the account with regards to the bossing. From Hard Lotus and Hard Damien, we didn't get any pitch boss. From Lucid and Hard Will, we didn't get a Twilight Mark. But from C10, I did manage to actually clear my Hard Dark Nail run. This time it only took two attempts, I believe, or two days, compared to the last week where I didn't even clear the boss. So I'm very happy that I managed to clear Hard Dark Nail this week. And there's not really much to say. I haven't really gotten any drops or anything interesting from these bosses. But what I did want to try to do was attempt Chaos Slime, because Chaos Slime is the last boss or the last weekly boss that I can try to do that isn't Black Mage or any of the grandest bosses. And as much as I would like to hype up the boss and the clear that I managed to do, spoiler alert, I did actually clear the boss. I didn't really feel like it was that interesting or that amazing to clear. It was just a case of DPSing down the boss and I think Slime is a relatively boring boss in of itself. And it was just a matter of DPSing the boss long enough and it did take me like 29 minutes to get the clear and this time I didn't die out. Unfortunately, as well as you can kind of guess, I didn't get anything from that boss either. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm rambling on about these sorts of things, and the truth is, I am starting to run out of things to do on this character that isn't just weekly bossing. The account has progressed so far to the point where a lot of the gains that I am making comes from training and comes from farming money. So the income is very limited on how many wealths I can do per day. It's limited by the weekly bossing and also Maple Tour and things like that. And all in all, it's starting to get a little bit boring for me. So today I'm going to start something a little bit different and kind of call it the end of, I guess you can call it season one. We managed to hit a lot of the milestones of a brand new account. We managed to hit a pretty good Legion level. We managed to clear almost every single weekly boss up to the more difficult ones, including Black Mage and Grandis. And I think it's time to just move on to something a little bit more interesting. Now, I want to say a lot of you guys might be worried that I'm ending the series. I'm not. I'm just going to change things up and I'm going to introduce you guys to a new friend of mine. Like I said, I've been focusing mostly on my main and my main goal right now is actually to hit 275. But I need something in between to keep things interesting for me. And to do that, I want to start a second main. Some of you guys might consider it a bossing mule. But to me, this character is going to be a second character that will progress alongside my main, hopefully. Probably not to the same speed, but it will be a fun little side project that I can work on. I want to introduce you guys to my second main slash bossing character slash farmer, whatever you would like to call it. It's my mechanic. Now, I do want to bring attention to the IGN of these characters and why I kind of decided to make this particular character. It's because Zoja is a throwback to one of my favorite games, Guild Wars 2, and I think some people in my comments have mentioned it. And somebody in the Alliance said, do you have the IGN timey? And unfortunately, this isn't the actual IGN timey. It does have some lowercase l's in the name, which is why it's all in full caps. But in the story of Guild Wars 2, Zoja's apprentice, I believe, is a literal mechanic called timey. So it made perfect sense for me to make my second character my mechanic. And what I wanted to talk about with this character is that there's a lot of things I want to do in this game, but I'm so time-gated by a lot of things, I needed something else to work on while waiting because on my main, all I'm really doing is just farming and doing weeklies. So having this second character might actually add a little bit more inspiration for me to play the game. And I'm kind of enjoying the game as it is. I just needed something a little bit extra to work on that isn't just farming. Now, I am aware that I do not like doing my dailies that much, and this is another character that will be doing Arcane River dailies, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy just working on just another character that can be strong, and I've never really played a mechanic before, and this is kind of perfect for me because mechanics are a resistance class, and I can share the cash shop inventory, so I can share my vac pet between the two characters, and as far as I'm concerned, mechanic seems like a pretty good farmer, so I'm always going to be happy with that. So yeah, I'm just going to be working on a mechanic in the time being as well. So my series is going to be kind of two sides of the same coin. 
where I'm going to be working on both my main, my battle mage, and I'm also going to be working on a second character so I have more things to update you guys on. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the series moving forward. I won't be doing too many things on the mechanic today, but I did want to kind of bring up the fact that I am losing a little bit of motivation, and hopefully this mechanic brings me back into the game a little bit. There's a lot of things that I need to do on this mechanic to get it set up. First off, I actually still need to do its fifth job advancement. Currently, it's only a fourth job, and it's because I left it at level 200 for the longest time. But what we can do is make it a lot easier on ourselves to try to get through a lot of the pre-quests. And that is because this current event gives us a lot of these EXP coupons, kind of similar to the Identesk event, where we were able to do a little mini game and gain these little EXP coupons. And I have been saving this on my account for a little bit now, and I'll be able to use them all to level up pretty quickly. This way I can unlock the new areas as fast as possible and cut down the amount of dailies as soon as possible as well. So I believe this character should be able to level up quite fast using these EXP points I've gotten from this minigame. And I have 6,000 points at the moment. Let's see how far this gets us. It should hopefully get us to like level 220, but we'll just have a see. So a little bit ambitious on the leveling up. We only managed to get to level 213, which is still pretty good considering that we basically got it for free. And now we'll be able to at least get to Choo Choo Island. I would like to get this character to level 220 as soon as possible to unlock Latchlan. Our Vanishing Journey weeklies don't take as long. We only need to do it once. But I think the level it will be pretty steady anyway. I think leveling up this character won't be the difficult part. I think getting the gear together on a second character is going to be kind of difficult because I don't have access to carries right now and I don't particularly want to try to get carried. I want to try to keep this account as solo progress as possible and only allow myself to do party content like Monster Park Extreme and these event mini games and everything else will be pretty much off the table. Another thing why I kind of wanted to work on a second main is because there are a lot of rewards from the Fairy Bros and the event that give us things like these arcane symbols. We have these XP vouchers coming up as well and a lot of random node stones. And for the most part, my main's nodes are kind of done and I don't really want to dump more nodes if I can help it onto the main character. So having a second character like this, where I can use all my spare things like my cubes, my nodes, my XP vouchers and the low level XP pots, it'll be good for me to just make use out of them. I think that'll be all for today's video regarding my mechanic. I just wanted to introduce you guys to this character and there's a lot of things I need to do to set this character up, include things like its bossing prequests and things like that. I also need to plan out what I wanted to do and how much time I want to commit onto this character, but like I said, it's just more of something that I can work on and look forward to whenever I'm kind of just bored on my main. The amount of farming that I've been doing on my main is quite high, so I am kind of getting a bit burnt out. And with this mechanic, it would be something that I can play with on the side when I don't really feel like just hitting mobs on my main. But that being said though, I do still care a lot about the battle mage and the progress of that character, and I will be spending the rest of this video on my battle mage. Again, just kind of bringing into the frame a second character that you guys can expect to see in the future. And I think it will be a lot of fun to have a second character that I can play on. Now back on the main, the first thing that I want to try to do is try to get as many bosses out of the way as possible. And the ones I want to start off with ideally are the ones that can drop arcane pieces. So for my battle mage, a lot of things are moving pretty fast, but I am time gated by one last thing that really puts together this character, and that is my arcane pieces. So currently with my arcane gear, I'm using three set right now. So I'm using the gloves, the shoes, and the weapon, and I'm missing this shoulder piece and this cape. Now, regarding my droplet situation, I actually am very close to being able to buy my shoulder. I actually just need to clear hard wheel one more time, and then once I pay a sum of money to buy droplets, I am actually able to buy the shoulder, assuming that I get at least two droplets from Will this week. What this means for my character though, is that if I can get a single arcane armor drop, not only does it save me a lot of money, but it does allow me to swap out this Absalab cape so then I can use a arcane cape. And the arcane cape is of course a bigger gain. And right now I'm kind of down to just buy the shoulder regardless because the current set bonus that I have with the two set Absalab is just 10% boss damage and 20 attack. Whereas the upgraded set bonus for arcane is 50 stat, 35 attack and boss damage. So logically speaking, it doesn't make sense for me to use three and two right now. The four set bonus will always be better. And then eventually I will have to go for the five set. And to start off, let's go with hard lucid and hard will because they're also the easiest.
Oh, guys, it exists. Our first Twilight mark on this account, finally. <laughs> I was starting to believe that it didn't exist. Yes, we actually have something that we can replace our condensed power crystal with now. Okay, now, this is the first time I've got really excited for a drop because last week, because I cleared Chaos Slime, I have a real chance of getting the Slime Ring as well, and the two set bonus for this Twilight mark is actually really good at 10% boss damage. So, honestly, even though it took a while to get this Twilight mark, this is one of the best drops I could have gotten because we have a chance at the Slime Ring and getting that two set bonus is actually just insane for this account early on. So yes, I'm super excited for this. Like, I'm so happy that we have something to replace this Condensed Power Crystal with because this Condensed Power Crystal doesn't give very much for us, unfortunately. But yeah, this Twilight Mark is a huge gain. I'm so excited for this and it's right before Star Forcing event as well. Not bad. This week we got two Twilight Marks, one from Will and one from Lucid. Nice to see that at least we have a spare now. It took a while for them to get here, but hey, we got two of them, so can't really complain about that. So just finished up some of the bosses and unfortunately we didn't get any arcane drops so we can't save a, a little bit of money on the droplets but that's okay we do still get our shoulder piece today because after will we have 13 of these droplets so i just need to go and grab some droplets i think from the event shop i think they give us 50 so i can save about two and a half bill to get our shoulder and then next week we are guaranteed to get our cape because we should have 12 of the lucid droplets and that will put us over onto five set Arcanes, which is uh, really nice, and it's a pretty substantial damage increase over these Abso gear because we get the five set arcane, and also we get an arcane cape, which can get a really good flame as well. Now I'm gonna spend the rest of the video actually taking part of this Star Forcing event today. We have a 30% off, and I've been waiting so long for a Star Forcing event. It has been like maybe a bit over a month since we last had our Star Forcing event, and I really want to make some gains because. I didn't show it just now, but I did die out of Dark Nail once again. Uh, it's, so it's still an arcane boss I haven't cleared yet. And given that today is Sunday, I might as well do the event first before taking on Dark Nail. And it would be a good time for me to show my stats and then uh, see how much damage that we can gain. So first off, here are my numbers. I'm currently sitting on 41 mil combat power, a little bit under 39k stat. Yeah, we're just going to try to see if we can push some of our star forcing up. We have quite a nice stack here. I have saved up 33 bill over the last couple of weeks. I did a lot of farming. I use a lot of my wealth. So you can see here, over the last couple of weeks, I, I've zeroed out on the level three ones and then my level two ones are almost out and I've chipped into the level ones. And I've been doing this pretty consistently over the last couple of weeks. And also our weekly bosses give us quite a lot of money. And it's just a matter of just not spending, I guess. And we have a lot of things that I wanna try to push for. The first thing that I want to try to do today on this event is actually try to get my shield to level 20 or 20 star force. With the new fatigue and cooldown reduction for crafting, I don't have to wait to craft new shields. I just need to make sure I have enough recipes for it. And I have only checked every once in a while on my recipes to see if I have the shield, but I should have some spares. I have 15 spares, 
And hopefully we have enough of the materials to make all 15 if we need to. But hopefully we don't have to craft 15 of them. So let's start off with um, the shield. And another nice thing is our guild actually has unlocked the Star Forcing Room. For those who don't know, the Star Forcing Room just basically star catches for us without us having to go through the animation, which is super convenient and just gives us a little bit more of an extra chance to get these stars. So I'll be doing all my Star Forcing in this room. So as I said, I'll start off with this shield and yeah, we'll just hopefully we can get this to 20. Now, unfortunately, the shield blew up, and I just realized a slight problem I have with this star forcing room. <laughs> I, I don't have any crafted shield spares in my inventory, so I actually have to go back to Art Mill to go craft them, so I'll be right back. Okay, we are back, and I went ahead and crafted a bunch of shields. Uh, hopefully, we don't go through all of these, but I do have, like, maybe another 5 or 10 recipes, uh, so I can keep making these shields, so it should be okay. Hopefully we don't have to keep going back. It's a little bit inconvenient to walk back to Ardent Mill to go craft some more shields. But thankfully the nice thing about the shield is we only need to get it to 20. So it's a relatively easy star compared to say 21. We're just gonna hope for the best here. And also a nice thing is because it's only a level I believe 130 item, it is quite cheap to star force. You can see here each of the stars are not even 50 mil. Thankfully we didn't have to go back to Outer Mill again, I was kind of worried because we came down to our final spare but we did manage to 20 star our shield, so this is something that we don't have to worry about pretty much ever again. I don't think that I'll make a second shield to try to get a better potential, I'll just roll with a single 20 star shield. It's a little bit inconvenient to try to craft more but yeah, thankfully I didn't have to go back to Outer Mill. I was getting a little bit worried when they started blowing up pretty fast but thankfully it streaked from 15 to 20 on the one I just got. That feels, that feels pretty good. Um, it costs us, uh, I want to say a little bit over 4 bill to get that 20 star. Pretty reasonable, not too bad, not too great, but yeah, it's, it's okay. And this is our best in slot as well, so very happy with a completed item. Now the next one that I'm going to be working on is going to be my black bean mark. Actually, the damage one, make sure <laughs> I don't work on my meso one. This uh, black bean mark is probably the best in slot for me at the moment as well, unless I find Pitch Boss somehow. <laughs> um, I, I don't really see myself replacing this, and even with the Pap Mark, it has to be 21 for it to be better anyway. So yeah, we'll just work on this Black Bean Mark. I do have, looks about like six of them in my inventory, so decent amount of spares, and yeah, we'll just hope for the best here. I'm not really sure what happened, but I got kicked out of the Star Forcing Room along with everybody else. That was kind of weird. <laughs> We're all just making our way back to the Star Forcing Room now. Oh, what's going on here? I think our Star Forcing Room moved mid Star Forcing session. <laughs> now we are stuck in a cutscene. We'd never have guessed that this is how it works. So it looks like the Star Forcing Room moved across one, but uh, it's, it's all good. We can continue Star Forcing. And for some reason, our black bean mark was at 19. So, <laughs> so we got a bonus star, I guess, from getting kicked out. That's kind of funny. Well, that was a nice uh, streak from 17 to 20. <laughs> wow, okay. So maybe that's the tech. We've got to get our guild leader to uh, change the rooms around a little bit more often. Okay, we got some pretty good gains already. Two 20 stars out of the way. And now I can look towards pushing some stars on my fodders. I have... A lot of belts and a lot of earrings, but the problem is I only have one superior belt, which is the one that I'm wearing, but I do have a lot of superior earring spares. So what I want to try to do is I want to try and 21 star a reinforce and then transfer that over onto a superior Golux earring and then tap it again from 20 to 21. So yeah, that looks to be the next plan. The nice thing about this as well is I'm probably going to get a lot of booms. It will clear out some of my inventory space, which will be sort of nice as well. And if we manage to actually finish our earrings, we can just ignore earrings forever and just not have to worry about picking them up again.
We got our reinforce to 21 and now we're going to transfer these over onto a superior earring and hopefully uh, the superior earring will go to 21 as well. I believe the chances of this going from 20 to 21 is about 80%. And yeah, we're just gonna hope for the best here. Um, I hope I put it on the one that has the better flame. It has 5% all stat for some reason, <laughs> which is kind of nice. And yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that uh, this will hit. And there we go, guys. Our first completed superior Golix item. Very, very nice for us. It adds quite a lot of extra damage, and you can see here, even with a no potential, it beats out our current superior earrings by quite a good margin. And what we can actually do now is we can use these superior Golix earrings as our damage gear, and we can use our existing 17 style ones as our item drop gear. So we can uh, finally get rid of these Horntail earrings that we don't need to use again, which is super, super nice. And the best part too is we can now clear out all of these earrings so we don't have to worry about those again. And yeah, it took five booms by the looks of it. And can't really complain about that. It was overall relatively cheap. I think it cost maybe a bit over four bill to get this 21 earring. Very, very happy with that result. The next thing that I want to try to Star Force is going to be my Twilight Mark. I'm only going to get it to 17 star for the time being. Uh, I don't want to push star on this at the moment because we do have to safeguard it. It is something that I don't have very many spares of. But it is a very nice upgrade over our condensed power crystal that I've been trying to get rid of for the longest time. So we'll safeguard this up to 17 star and use it as is. Uh, as you might notice as well, uh, I have a legendary potential on it because we got some bright cubes from the event, I believe. Uh, from the minor picnic event, they gave us a few of them. I used these 20 and I didn't record it. Of course, I didn't expect it to go to legendary, but yeah, it got to legendary really, really cheap. So we have an amazing item coming up for us here in this Twilight Mark and it's going to be another piece of damage gear that we can use. Thankfully the Twilight Mark streaks from 15 to 17 with Safeguard on. That saves us quite a lot of money because <laughs> some of my other items just got stuck at 15 to 16 and if we had to Safeguard that, that is quite expensive. So this is a pretty nice gain. All we need to do now is just flame it a little bit and then cube it for two line of stat and it will be a significant gain of damage over our condensed power crystal. Now I still have 23 bill remaining, there's a lot of things that I can do. I have two options, uh, I'm thinking of either pushing stars on potentially the Carnage Treasure, uh, it's currently just at 17 right now and I do have a decent amount of spares, or I can go and try to push some stars on my belt. I have two options, one is to go to 21 and then transfer it and then tap it back to 21 again after the transfer, or I can try to Star Force and 22 this reinforced belt so it comes across and transfers immediately into 21. Now, I think that is risky either way, but I'm kind of leaning towards just going for 21 and then transferring it, because going for 22 is very risky compared to just going for 21 twice. The chances of it blowing up going for 21 twice is lower than going for a 22, I believe. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Making sure to turn off Safeguard and then we can keep going. I also just realized after that boom, I had my disable star catching off. Uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of this room, so... <laughs> I just realized that. Thankfully it was only for uh, one item. Don't worry guys, I saw it. I, I messed up, but don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, there we go. We managed to get it to 21. Now, again, I have two choices. I can either tap this to 22 or transfer this over and then tap the superior belt one more time. I am going to decide to transfer it first. Uh, I know this, this will be pretty bad if it doesn't go well because I don't have any spares, but I still think that this is probably better statistically and I am going to only settle for 21 anyway. I'm going to use my existing superior belt first to see if it can go to 21 because I don't want to spend any coins if I can help it. Worst case is I can just buy a new belt and then 17 star it. Uh, the potential wasn't anything too impressive, so I don't really mind too much. And yeah, let's hope that this last star sticks. Oh, 
Oh, thank god. Okay, that is a significant gain. I am so happy that that star didn't blow up because one thing is we got a 21 star belt, thankfully making up for the previous star force session on the previous event where I just first tap, boom, the superior belt and I hadn't seen one ever since. But this is such a nice gain and it saves us a lot of coins too because I was really worried that if this blew up, I'd go have to go buy a new belt and that is 700 coins into a, a drop that we could get pretty easily otherwise. And yeah, I am so relieved because now with the earrings done and the belt done, I can finally stop hoarding all of these fodders and get so much inventory space back. So I'm, I'm going to do that first before I continue star forcing. I'm going to clean up my inventory. And there we go, such a clean inventory, so much cleaner than it was before. I decided to get rid of all of my Absolab stuff because I don't think I'll go back for Absolab. I did keep the spare superior earrings just in case I decide to do something with them. Uh, I, it's very unlikely that I'll do anything with them, but I think it would be just good to just keep, keep them in the background somewhere just in case because they are kind of rare drops. And yeah, we have a much, much nicer inventory right now, which feels really, really good. So much more space. <laughs> Anyway, let's go back into the Star Forcing room and uh, see what more we can do. We have 21 build remaining, and there's a few items that I had in mind. I would like to push some stuff that I have spares of. Uh, of course, I would like to try to get some more stars on things that I can easily replace. And the next one I was thinking of doing was this Kana Treasure. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, maybe I'll do one or two Kana Treasures and see how much it takes in terms of money. I think it is better to safeguard but it can be pretty expensive we'll just see how it goes uh, i'm just going to test the waters and see how i feel about spending this money well that was fast <laughs> okay Unfortunately, we didn't get it past to 21, so for this one, I'll just keep it at 17 for the time being. On second thought, I just failed 15 to 16 about five times, and I just watched my money go down. I think I'd rather just not safeguard it. <laughs> it's a bit expensive. And now it decides to go, okay. <laughs> and I just remembered I have another item that I can star force, which is my reinforced ring. Um, I bought this and cubed it a long while ago. This one I'll definitely have to safeguard because it is a Golux item. So this one might be expensive, so I was thinking to myself, if I'm going to safeguard something, I might as well do this one. Now I'm aware that there is a 5, 10, 15 coming up and I should technically wait for that. But I would like to have a full set of damage rings. If I have this, I might be able to replace one of my drop rings. And yeah, there's a little bit of extra damage I can have while doing my bosses. And there we go, we got the Reinforced Ring also to 17. Now, I want to quickly check if this is actually better than my item drop gear, and it is ever so slightly better. Um, so yeah, that is a pretty nice gain. Unfortunately, the Carnage Treasure didn't see very many gains, but at least we can replace one of the rings with this Reinforced Golix Ring. And now we have three damage rings all up. The, the last damage ring that I would like to have is probably the Slime Ring. Uh, I haven't done... Chaos Slime this week yet, so hopefully after all of these upgrades, it will make my slime run significantly faster. And honestly, I'm kind of happy with the gains that I've made so far. A lot of the things that I want to try to push now require me to safeguard. Things including the Carnage Treasure. I think in hindsight, maybe I should have safeguarded, but only one of the three rings that blew up were below 17, so I don't feel too bad about it. But things like the Reinforced Golix Ring, I definitely want to safeguard. My Dominator Pendants, I definitely want to safeguard. And of course, the Twilight Marks when I try to push them. So what I'm going to do now is going to spend some money and try to make this belt and this Superior Golix Earring usable. And I will spend some money to fix up this Twilight Mark and then, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I need to start off by buying a bunch of Bright Cubes. So I'm going to buy just 100 here and see if I can get both these earrings and the belt to Legendary. And then I will buy some glowing cubes to re-roll the potentials. So ideally this will be a two line and same with the belt. And then I will also spend some money to re-roll my current earrings into, I believe, drop gear because that will replace these Hontail earrings that are no longer going to be used. Ooh. 
Wow, guys, what a reveal. That was seven black cubes and it ended up on a double prime three line in. Wow, I really couldn't have asked for anything better for a superior earring. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that was on reveal as well. That was the tear up into three line of in and it's double prime as well. That is ridiculous. I can't believe that just happened. I caught that on camera. I think this is the first time I've ever seen a three line reveal on my account ever. That is so ridiculous. I'm so happy that it just happened. <laughs> okay, it looks like today's a good day. Looking really, really good for me here. Wow, what a beautiful earring. <laughs> okay, enough enough of the earring for now. I can, I can think about that and calm down for a bit. Let's uh, move on to this belt. I just can't believe that happened. That was on reveal too. Ridiculous. Took us about 80 bright cubes to get it to legendary. Uh, honestly, it's a little bit on the high side, but given the fact that we hit this earring, I am not going to complain at all. What I'm going to do now is to buy some bright cubes. Uh, I might buy like about 100 of these, and I will use these to re-roll a few items. Of course, I need to re-roll this belt into hopefully two lines, and then I need to work on the twilight mark as well that we will be using for damage. There's no way that just happened. <laughs> I three-lined my belt. Oh, I sort of three-lined. Uh, it's double all stat, but I'll take it. A 24% on the belt? That is uh, a clean, clean gain. Holy. Things are looking really, really nice right now. Two three-lines, basically. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's work on the Twilight Mark, and then we'll come back with any spares to uh, work on our drop earring. There's no way that just happened. Three in a row? Are you serious? <laughs> what's, what's happening today? That didn't just happen. Oh, I'm so... Like, what? I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know what to say. Three, three lines. It's really difficult to roll for these three lines as well. I was happy to settle with 12 and 9, or even 9 and 9, and... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe the game didn't like the fact that I was going to take it easy after today, but they're really roping me in back, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to work on these drop earrings now. <laughs> just going to chill out a little bit. Hopefully these uh, earrings uh, drop in stat, but I'll, I'm happy to also just take it as just item drop. There's no way. What? What's going on? Are you serious? I just I rolled a hybrid with bright cubes. No, 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 no. I rolled a hybrid with glowing cubes. What? What's going on? Is somebody watching me record? Like I'm not streaming or anything. What? I am so confused. What I just witnessed. All right, I'm gonna stop my recording for a little bit, guys. I I, I have what? I don't know what just happened. Okay, I calmed down a little bit. <laughs> I still really can't believe what I just witnessed, but. I'm just gonna try not to think about it too much. That is ridiculous. I think a GM or something is watching me cube and just decided, hey, you can have this. <laughs> it, is, it is so silly that I hit those lines. Uh, I am happy to be lucky. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna stop cubing for a little bit. I wanna spend some money to flame my Twilight Mark. Uh, my Twilight Mark has basically nothing. It's got 20 in on it. About 22 flames, we hit 60 and 4. I'm pretty happy just settling on that for the time being. Uh, pushing flames on these sorts of items can be pretty expensive, so I'm going to try not to overextend myself. And I can keep these, I believe, all the way until next week, so I can use these on the arcane cape that I will be able to buy. So I don't really feel too bad about having some spare flames. I do have a nice amount of money remaining as well, which is a really nice feeling, so I can use that going into 5, 10, 15 as well. Actually guys, I was wrong. There's one more thing that we have to do before we finish spending money for uh, this video. And that is to get my arcane shoulder. I just completely forgot about it. I was so excited with all the gains that we've made uh, that I almost forgot to buy my arcane shoulders. Today is still a pretty okay day to go for it and it is a gain in of itself. Uh, so I'm gonna go and I need to buy another 
50 or so droplets and then I should be able to buy the arcane shoulder and we'll be able to star force it and I think also cube it today as well. So I'm going to quickly go grab all the stuff to do that and yeah, I'll see you guys in the star forcing room uh, one last time for today. Now this piece is an arcane piece and I do have to safeguard it. So the 15 through to 17 can be really expensive. We're on 11 bill left at the moment. I'm really hoping that that's enough. I don't want it to take too much hopefully, but given the luck that we've had today, I would not be surprised if it all got drained and we didn't hit 17, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty good for us though today. Yeah, today is really our day. It streaked from 15 to 17 and saved us quite a lot of money. And wow, even just a clean shoulder here gives us range over our current Absalab shoulder. That is a really nice feeling. And I believe I can save myself some money on the cubing costs as well because I can go clear another 500 mobs to be able to get this unique potential scroll. And then I can basically just cube it from unique to legendary. So I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick and then claim this scroll. Right, so that is all the mobs, I believe, and I should be able to claim the unique potential scroll, and we're going to use that on our shoulder. Okay, no tear up. Let's buy a few more cubes. And of course, it's the next one that I use that tears it up. Anyway, no complaining, but it's a bit of a shame we have some spare cubes, but I think we'll find something we can use it on later on anyway. Not too bad. Right, like we're gonna hope for hopefully two lines of int, probably 10 and 10 or a 13 and 7 or something like that, and I'll be pretty happy with it. And there we go, we hit 10 and 10 on the shoulder, and that is a fantastic gain over our current one. 700k range on top of it, and now we can basically just wait for one more item, which we will get next week or the next reset and finish off our five set arcanes but yeah guys incredible gains for today let's put on all of our damage gear the only thing left i need to put on is this reinforced ring to replace some of our drop rings and yeah we managed to have pretty much everything in damage gear now just like i said just one more ring hopefully we can get a slime ring and work on that but everything else is phased out into full damage gear with so many gains here. Now I'm going to show my combat power. I haven't looked at it either. We started off at 41 mil and I believe like 38 and a bit K stat. Let's see what we gained after today's event. That is ridiculous. We went from 38 and a half to 42 and a half, 4K stat increase. And we went from 40 million combat power to 50 million combat power. In terms of just combat power, it's a 25% gain. I don't know how that scales in terms of FD, but that sounds like a lot. And the 4k stat increase? What? That is so crazy because we hit so hard on the potentials. I think that I'm not going to have any troubles anymore with my weeklies. This is such a damage increase. I can't believe it. I think that that is a good spot to end this video on. I don't really have much more to say regarding what happened today in terms of the gains. I'm just going to call it it. I was going to have fun and do things on the mechanic and stuff like that that I intro at the beginning of the video, but I think next one is telling me I should just stick with my battle mage. I don't know. I'm just getting that little feeling. I really do want to work on my mechanic, but I think I'm going to stick with my battle mage for just a little bit longer. I'm going to focus a little bit more on this character because clearly, clearly something's happening. Anyway, guys, that'll be all for today. Thank you all for watching and following my journey and watching me luck out on a ridiculous star forcing and apparently cubing event as well. Hopefully you guys don't decide to just leave and not come back, but <laughs> yeah, that was, the gains today were so crazy and uh, hopefully you guys will still follow me despite me being so lucky. Take care you guys and I'll see you all in the next part, hopefully.